And so first off, let me start off by apologizing for like how long this one took, this year two priority pull list. It's just taken a lot of time in terms of research, in terms of consulting some people, in terms of getting more opinions. And then with all of that, also like piecing together what is realistic, what is not, taking into account like extraordinary events such as Kasumi as well as Anne, and just all of that kind of stuff. However, we have finally arrived at something I am pretty happy with. I would still call it like a second, third draft. And obviously, if you guys do have your own opinions, your own reservations about what I am about to present to you guys, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. But with all of that being said, welcome to the year two priority list. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be going through the priority pull list, roll list, whatever you want to call it for all of the year two units. And so for year two, all I'm defining it as is, as you can see up here, 2022 from the start Muimi banner all the way to the end December, which ends with a New Year's Kokoro. And so in this video, I'm going to be pretty brief because there are quite a lot of characters to run through. So I just want to like describe the rationale as to how I came to this kind of ranking, this tier list. And so unfortunately, this is not going to be like a very very comprehensive look at each of these different characters it's more going to be looking at like generally speaking what do they do are they like a physical attacker or whatever and their impact on each respective meta and so with that being said let's almost jump into it except for the fact that i do want to call out a couple of key points before we get into this tier list itself and so the first thing that i did want to explain is that some of these like limited looking units aren't actually limited and so for example we have greya and Anne who come from a different ip however they are going to be permanent on top of that, we are also going to have Oedo Kuka and Oedo Ninon who are also permanent units. And then down over on this side of the spectrum, we have Transfer, Student, Aoi, as well as Halloween, Mimi. They are both also permanent. And so the second caveat is this one over here, where we start getting these prize gatches as well as these shard gatches over here. And so if you guys don't know how prize gatches work, you can look at my like very, very old gacha strategy video. I'm pretty sure I explain it. But in a nutshell, every time you roll, like a 10 roll or whatever roll, you get some extra items, stuff like that. As for this shard system thing over here, all it's saying is that if you manage to pull Halloween Kyoka on this banner, you will pick up an extra 100 of her shards. Absolutely incredibly straightforward. And so with that being said, let's jump into the tier list itself. And so I'm just going to go from the beginning, beginning with Muimi and then work towards the end. So Muimi must roll SSS tier at this point in the game. Her staying power is going to be incredible. A very, very long shelf life, AOE physical damage dealer. She's going to be fantastic for CB as well as Arena. Very, very good unit. 143 pulls. You have about like an 85, 86% chance to get her within the free pull. However, that is only a statistical probability. If you guys don't get her, don't come sue me because like as seen by some of my other pulls like New Year's Yui, I didn't get him. Anyway, moving on. So we've got Kasumi next. Kasumi is a fantastic PvP unit, but she also sees a lot of use in CB. And so as you can see, Kasumi is in the really should roll. However, there are scenarios. There are many, many scenarios in which she could be actually classified as skip. And the first reason why she would be skip is because she is a permanent. But the second big reason is because in about four months time after Kasumi gets released, we actually get her farming stage in terms of hard mode as well as an event which gives her shards. And so what that means is that about four months later, maybe in May or so, April, May, we should or everybody should have a Kasumi. And so from a gem preservation point of view, you definitely could skip Kasumi. A lot of people probably will have to skip Kasumi, especially because of their low gem count. But with that being said, like if you really want her, you could definitely get her and she is very, very strong. But if you do get her, her, you really have to make the decision very very similar to Ruka. If you want to use her in PvP attack offense then 3 star is okay. However, you're probably going to want 5 star for defense. But in terms of CB and breaking her, you really want to keep her at 3 stars. And so that is why Kasumi is going to be one of the exceptions, right? She is so easily farmable. We will get her within like the next 4 months. But on the other hand, you are going to make Arena super super breezy. All right, and so moving through, next we got Arisa. Arisa unfortunately is a skip. She is good, but she is not good enough to sink gems into. And then after that, we've got Anne. So generally speaking, the really should roll, she is also an exception. She could be a skip potentially. And so Anne is quite good, especially if you're top 10, top 25 CB, you're very, very likely going to be pulling for Anne. And the reason is because she is a fantastic mage, or rather she is another piece of the mage team. But then on the other side of it, like the reason that she can be skipped is if you do have all of the other mages, so I'm talking Il 
Lilia, Kyoka, Skiaru, Akari, Nanaka built up, stuff like that, then you could potentially skip Anne. I'm still on the fence. I want to skip Anne, but I don't know if I can, just based on how I'm feeling in terms of like competitiveness. All right, and so after that, we have Greya over here. And so Greya is essentially Ilya light with less risk, but less damage. And so in that regard, you guys are not gonna be pulling for Greya. Why? Because I didn't raise a whole bunch of little, you know, if you're looking for someone like Ilya, just use Ilya, you know what I'm saying? And so with that in mind, Greya is a skip as you can see down here. Moving on, we've got Oedo Kuka over here. And so Oedo Kuka is your magical tank, very similar to like her base copy. However, Okuka is actually pretty cool because I believe her autos, like her normal damage is actually magic damage. And so what I'm saying is that if you do look at your normal Kuka's auto attacks, they are in fact physical damage. Pretty cool kit, but depending on what you're doing, especially like considering she's a tank, uh, very much a pass or you could, but eh, maybe she certainly will see a fair bit of use but like i wouldn't really sweat it all right so next we've got kyoka and so at this point we've got kyoka ue kyoka ue allows your critical damage on her ub to do four times damage instead of the normal two times and so whilst that is pretty cracked out you really do want to not roll on this banner so as you can see she is a skip because she is farmable from the hard mode stages. So you can farm her entire copy as well as the UE. All right, so here is where it's gonna get a little bit more spicy. So we've got Oedo Ninon over here. Oedo Ninon is honestly like quite a fantastic attacker. A lot of the units that we're gonna see today are fantastic attackers. However, in the context of like CB and even Arena, but like CB in particular, you can only use so many characters in a team. And if you're only trading up for like a 10% increase in damage, which does matters for T10 and T25 and potentially T50 as well. But for the vast majority of people, the O Ninon is not going to matter like that much. All right, so next we've got Rem and Amelia, and you can see that they are in the skip section, which is tragic because honestly, even a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking, man, I'm gonna go freaking all in on Rem and I'm gonna freaking go all in on Amelia and I'm gonna love it. Even if I spark, all right? <laughs> even if I spark. But unfortunately, the reality is, is that Rem and Amelia pre-UE, they are not as impactful as a lot of the other units that we are going to see very, very soon. And so from a meta point of view, I would highly, highly recommend skipping Rem and Amelia and then eventually pulling them when they rerun. And so as you can see, they do indeed rerun one year later, but this is from the context of a meta slave. If you guys do love your Rems and Amelias, and I completely understand that, then just go for it, my dudes. All right, so next we've got Ilya and Maho. So obviously big, big skip for the same reasons as Kyoka. But again, remember that we do have our UEs coming out here. So at the very least, get excited for it. All right, so here is the start of Limited Hell. Again, V2 or V3, I don't know. I think this is V3 now. So first off, we have Summer Susna and Summer Susna is a fantastic physical attacker. And you'll notice that I said the same thing about On Ninon. So realistically speaking, if you guys do have like some excess jemmies, if some of you are like floating at like 210K or something, then you could certainly go for the Summer Susna as well as the On Ninon. And then on top of that, if you did deprioritize like these two, and then if you did pick up like the New Year's Yui as well as the Christmas Chica last time, then you'll see that this list is actually shrinking, the mass pulls. And so in that kind of context, you can start looking at like some of these It's Okay characters. Like they're really not just like It's Okay, but I unfortunately know the reality of the situation, which is that there are a lot of units to pull for. And so this is just the way that it's been arranged. However, let me come back up with these guys over here and then quickly talk about Summer Susana. So Summer Susana is essentially so but in a bathing suit. <laughs> so she has very, very similar mechanics to her base copy, except the fact that like, I believe the crit on the UB is dependent on one of her skills. But other than that, she is again, just a really solid attacker. And so that is why she is in the, it's okay. She's quite good. All right, coming up to Summer Pekrin as well as Summer Kiaru. So this is where it's getting a little bit exciting because Summer Pekrin, Summer Kiaru, and all of the other reruns from now on, they're actually going to be getting their unique equipments. So Summer Kiaru is going to be like ultra, ultra cracked where both of her skills, skill one and skill two are going to do defense down. Not only that, but the UE upgraded skill one for Summer Kiaru is going to do bigger damage. In the context of Summer Pekrin, like she's good, she's solid, but she is certainly not like a must pull. And so that is why you can see Summer Pekrin is down in the you could, but nah. And then Summer Kiaru holding onto her crown as a mainstay in magic teams. All right, here we go. Here we go. The most important unit of the year, if not in the entire game. I am sure you guys have heard of her before. I am sure you guys are sick of hearing about her, Summer Saren. So Mama Saren over here, as you can see, the first one in the must roll because she is so in 
insanely cracked. But why exactly is she cracked? So essentially, she gives TP to the entire team, like a lot of TP once off at the very start of the match. And so what that leads to is a lot of extremely fast union bursts, whether this be in arena or in CB. In arena, it's quite obvious why that's good, right? If you get all of your UBs off before the other team, like that team is rigging Dunzo. But for CB, like if you are able to get an extra UB off for your entire team, you can already imagine like how much damage that is going to add. It honestly may even be an extra two UBs depending on how it all goes, right? And on top of all of that, she also is buffing the entire team. So she is not discriminant between magic or physical. She is good for everybody in all game modes. You will take her wherever you can. You will take her to Luna Tower. You will take her to CB, to Arena, to the story mode. You'll take her out shopping if she asks for it because if she leaves you, you're freaking donezo, okay? All right. Okay, I think you guys get it. Okay, let's move on. So, Sama Makoto. Sama Makoto is certainly, in my opinion, one of the ones that are an exception. However, the exception is not whether she should be up here or she should be down here in the skips. It's more if she should be up here in the must roll. The only reason she is down here in the orange is because there are so many must rolls in this year too. The only reason why Sama Makoto is down here in the really should roll and not in the must roll is because there are just so many characters that are in the must roll section. But seriously, guys, like if you have planned out for all of these characters up here, Sama Makoto is certainly the next one that is going to be promoted up to must roll. And the reason is because she is just like utterly cracked in CB, CB alone. I want to make that very, very clear because like the Makoto versus Sama Makoto, the Makoto counterpart is actually better for general use. In a nutshell, Sama Makoto is pretty much a better version of normal Makoto if there's only one target. And so that statement pretty much says it all. Like there should not really be any explaining required. She is going to be cracked out for boss bosses in CB, potentially like the very hard bosses or the special bosses or whatever, but nowhere else. But when she is getting cracked out, she is going like, you know, four times co in a day kind of cracked out, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, if you're even thinking about CB, she is certainly a must roll. However, for now, I will leave her down here. All right, and so next we have Summer Tamaki and Summer Suzume rerun, of course, with their UEs. Summer Tamaki is good. Summer Tamaki is really good, actually. She is quite solid, as you guys can tell. She is quite a mainstay in all of our CB teams. And with her UE, she is is even better. However, like if I'm going to classify Summer Suzuna over here and New Year's Hiyori and Oninon down here, then Summer Tamaki is probably going to be around the same place. On the other hand, we have Summer Suzume and honestly, like I'm tempted to move her down to a skip because she's not like, she's not ultra ultra critical. Like she is quite annoying in arena, but other than that, like there are very, very niche use cases for her where you're feeding off her golem to some of the bosses in clan battle to get them to UB more and then like taking advantage of her buffs. Like her UE is pretty much going to increase physical and magical defense. If I remember correctly but all in all like a pretty easy skip to be honest like there's a there's a pretty good chance i would move her down to skip all right and so to round things off with summer maho over here summer maho is essentially a magical attacker she's a decent one however pre ue i actually don't know if she is used that much she seems good she seems okay and so that is why she is probably at the end of the it's okay like she does seem quite decent on the other hand you could certainly wait till the year after to pick her up so that you can get her ue as well but the reality is is that you should should be pretty set with your magic team. All right, next we've got Ilya over here. Unfortunately, Ilya is a big, big skip as you guys can already see over here. And then we are finally getting our Nenika. Now, <laughs> Nenika, you guys, you guys need to pull her. You guys see the festival. You guys think of Muimi. You guys think of Christina. You're going to be like, oh, wow. Well, Nenika by default, I know nothing about her. I'm already going to pull her. Nenika is our third prefez unit, except she is a magical based one. In a nutshell, Nenika clones herself. She does a whole bunch of damage. She does a whole bunch of buffs. She does a whole bunch of magical things. She is certainly a mainstay in pretty much every single magical comp. And you really should pick her up at this point because it's going to enable a lot of comps down the line. That's, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. She summons a clone. She does a lot of magical things. Let's, let's move on. All right, Aoi transfer student. Now she is, um, she is actually fantastic for what she is. So as you can see, I have placed her actually right after Summer Makoto. And honestly, I do believe that she deserves this place because if you can imagine like OG Makoto, a lot of defense down, but ranged, and so therefore a safe position, like that's that's a lot of defense down. On top of that, like your transfer student Aoi is also using the signature Aoi skills. I'm talking about the poison and the poison is reasonably strong, right? So if you guys didn't remember, poison actually goes through armor and MR. So yeah, she certainly is a fantastic pickup. However, the reality is, is that she is a permanent unit. So you could technically actually skip this one if you wanted. But on the other hand, in the context of arena, she is certainly going to see use as well. And so she's not going to be like a dead investment. All right, so moving through, we've got Arisa and G 
Vegeta, unfortunately, both are farmable, both are fantastic, but they are just not going to be part of the plan. And then we have Chloe over here, who is going to be a skip, as you can see. And the reality is, is that she is a physical attacker, a decent physical attacker. And coming off the back of Summer Susana, Summer Tamaki, or Ninon, who are all fantastic attackers, and then combining that with the fact that Chloe is going to be permanent, it is definitely a skip recommendation, unfortunately. After that, we are in the Halloween Limited Hell. So we've got Halloween Kyoka up first. Halloween Kyoka, in a nutshell, is a magical buffer, except for the fact that she only buffs magical attack and not magical crit rate or anything else. It's kind of weird, and I put her in it's okay, but the reality is, is that most top tier clans, and even like some of the lower ones, are probably going to be getting her. So she is probably going to be sitting up, like, uh, like very much like the Summer Makoto on the border, right? But other than that, like her kit and her purpose is quite straightforward. All right, and so here we have Halloween Shinobu UE as well as H Misaki UE as well. They are good, they are solid. However, I think at this point in the game, even with UEs, it's actually quite hard to justify these two. Kind of like a classic tale of power creep, right? So like Summer Pekrin is over here. I do think that Halloween Shinobu is better than Summer Pekrin, but yeah, especially when these two characters are surrounded by two fantastic characters, it's very, very hard to recommend. Okay, so moving on, we've got Halloween Mimi over here. And so Halloween Mimi is actually gonna be a fantastic attacker especially in the context of CB. And so her kit, like in terms of combining her buffs as well as the UB and the massive damage, she is unfortunately, well fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, but she is a cut above everybody else down here. But not only that, she is also quite strong in arena. So she will be having a dual purpose very much like your TS Aoi. In that context, I think she is very, very deserving of this spot right here. All right, and so next we have Luna, who is actually a permanent character, probably the only permanent character who is in the must roll set. Section. And the reason that she is here is because she is essentially the ultimate battery. Whilst you've got Summer Saren who is battering like straight up at the front at the very start of the round, and then you've got like your Saren as well as your Yukari as well as your Yuki who are periodically buffing the TP. Then you've got Luna who is doing it a lot more and just buffing a lot more, especially because she is doing a HP tax. So very similar to your Ilya, how she has a HP tax, cost HP to do some damage or like buff up and stuff. Luna actually taxes the ally that is receiving the TP, but the TP gain is like so yeah, the reality is, is that we're going to be seeing Luna quite a fair bit. However, at this point in time, you can see that we're already getting the 100 shards. And so rolling for a permanent at this point, it's not overly bad. All right, moving on to the next banner, we've got Ruka. And as you can see, Ruka, Nanaka, Eriko, they are all going to be a fantastic skip because hopefully you will have all of them, not only at five star, but with UEs as well. And so next we have Kaya. Kaya over here. Kaya is decent. She is actually quite good, especially with UE. But just a quick reminder that at this point, she doesn't have UE yet. She She's good, but like a lot of people compared her to Christmas Christina and were like, well, if I'm going to get Kaya, I'd rather get Christmas Christina, who technically is a little bit better. On top of that, Christmas Christina also has some other utilities, which we'll talk about later. But combining those facts with the fact that she is a permanent unit, she is unfortunately going to be way lower priority. So down here, she's good, but she's not good enough to be prioritized. And so with that, let's move on to Christmas Christina. Like I said, a lot of people call her a better version of Kaya. However, there is also a second part to Christmas Christina. And it's the fact that her bond bonus gives three TP boost to the base Christina, which is absolutely insane. Like imagine freaking pulling for a unit so that you can make your base unit better. That's... <laughs> Now that I say it out loud, it's kind of utter insanity, especially when the TP boost is only like freaking three TP boost, but a lot of clans are planning for that. That's the reality of it. Me personally, I don't think it's enough to warrant like pulling a Christmas Christina, but a lot of people do feel that they need that extra TP and feel that she is quite good. And so I think this spot is quite deserving. All right, moving through over here, we've got the Chika Christmas Chika and the Christmas Ayane. Now, this is an interesting one. If you guys have no intention of using like the Christmas Chika loops, or like those 20 minute timelines, there is literally no reason to pull on this banner at all. Christmas Ayane is good. Like if you can imagine again, an Ilya, but physical and single target and doing a lot of damage, like that is her and with her UE. But unfortunately, in my opinion, especially when you're this late into the year. And so that's why I'm kind of considering the ones in like January, February of next year. This one actually could be a skip considering a lot of the time you're borrowing the X chickas anyway. And so yeah, that's that banner. And so like realistically, this chicka here could be down at the very bottom. But for now, I will leave her up here. All right. And so next we have the Christmas Ilya, who I think is decent. I believe she's like Ilya, except single target instead of AOE. However, combined with the fact that she is a permanent unit, 
I probably wouldn't touch this banner. And so my guys, welcome to the end game. Welcome to New Year's Kiaru. New Year's Kiaru was pretty much the start of insanity. It was the start of side games pretty much like balancing the game around this one character. Very, very soon, I'm going to show you guys some of like the New Year's Kiaru comps, some of the x checker comps, some of the loops, some of the physical comps. Pretty much a sneak peek of what's to come. But like, just know this, Kiaru, New Year's Kiaru, Niaru, or whatever you want to call her, she goes into the millions and millions and millions of damage. And I'm not talking just like, oh, we're doing like 3 million to one boss, something like that. I'm talking about potentially soloing bosses, soloing entire bosses by yourself. However, New Year's Kiaru by herself is actually just kind of meh. You do need like all of those magical supports, the TP gains, like all of that crazy stuff to make it actually work. And so whilst New Year's Kiaru is a must pull, you really do have to like pull everything, all of the pieces together to make her work. And that my guys is certainly a video that is coming out very, very shortly because we need to start preparing now. We will definitely talk about her a lot more, a lot more. Don't, don't you guys worry, my guys. So let's move on to New Year's Yui as well as New Year's Hiyori. Hopefully at this point, you will already have your New Year's Yui and potentially have your New Year's Hiyori. And so I don't need to sell you guys New Year's Yui. New Year's Yui, like you guys should already have her to be honest. When played right, she pretty much guarantees you invincibility. Like you will never die in a stage. But as for New Year's Hiyori, with the release of her UE, she actually becomes quite a strong attacker. And so like that is why she is sitting here with the rest of these units. But aside from that, not really much else to say about that. And so let's go on to our last unit of the year, New Year's Kokoro. Now, New Year's Kokoro is actually certainly like, uh, I would say she is also borderline to the must rolls. And so New Year's Kokoro is very much like her base counterpart, very much support, sit in the middle and just help everyone out. Except this time she is really helping them out because she has a provoke, AKA a taunt. But not only that, she is also going to be buffing up physical attack, physical crit rate and physical damage. And so realistically speaking, I don't need to sell to you guys how freaking insane that is. She is certainly going to see use in both CB and PvP and so she is a pretty safe investment to be honest. I would personally highly recommend her and so that is why she is sitting over there. However, with that being said, we have finally reached the end of this list. Ah, God, how long is this video going to be? Oh boy. But I think it's going to be worth it. I think this was a great introduction to all of these year two characters. And you guys already know, this is the part where I pass off to you guys. First of all, I do want to know if you guys actually found this helpful, if this was a good introduction, even without the context of each of their individual skills. But second of all, do you feel that there are any units rated today that were rated actually unfairly? For example, depending on like your type of content, like you might actually rate the summer Susaners and some of these attackers in the really should role. Did you feel maybe I was giving too much preferential treatment to the Kasumi and the Anne? Should they really be in skip? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving something, then I would really appreciate that because it means you watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please like this video. And if you would like to see more, then please subscribe. And so with that, as some of Susume once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.